Hi everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave with me, Gem. We are back for part three of colouring this lovely flower in the very beautiful book Po Drugiege Stroni Schnu by Karolina Kubikowska. If you haven't seen the first two parts and you'd like to see it from the beginning, I shall leave a link for those down here in the description and you can go back and start at the beginning. So let's get going. So I'm going to do some petals first. So I've got my three uh, pinky purple colours. I've got magenta, light purple pink and middle purple pink. I've also got my pencil sharpener just beside me. Um, I think we're sharp enough to start with, but we'll see how we go. So as before, I'm just going to do some of these darker areas first with the kind of heavier hatching and get that down um, as some sort of base. And then I'll go from there. I'm actually really glad to be sitting doing this this afternoon. I have been so stressed out these last few days. It's just unreal. I've been having problems with lambs because we have now started our first lambs have arrived um, I have also been having huge technology problems and basically I'd really like to throw my computer my camera my phone my iPad I'd like to just throw them all out the window right now I'd also like to throw my BT home hub my internet router out the window also that would be marvelous I have had nothing but problems. I was filming a another video, um, which will be going up slightly before this one. And what should have taken me a grand total of maybe four hours to edit and upload it ended up taking me three days. Um, just the really unreliable things. <laughs> Um, I did get it all fixed in the end, but it didn't make me feel any better that I'd, you know, wasted some of my precious time on essentially sitting watching loading bars and, you know, loading circles and, oh my. Anyway, I'm just glad that it's over with. So yeah, I'm really happy to be sitting here colouring today. That makes me happy. I'm following exactly the same idea as before. Um, I'm not doing anything different here. I just want to get some colours blended in together and make it look pretty. Yeah, technology sucks. I hate it. I'm kind of fantasising about a technology-free weekend where I'm just going to sit and draw pictures and read books all weekend. I think the chances of that actually being able to happen are so, so, so slim. Um, just because, well, just because mobile phones. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that noise in the background there. That is my husband-to-be um, in his tractor going up and down outside the front of the house. I don't know what he's doing. I don't want to know what he's doing. Um, but hey, it's just in case you hear him zooming past, now you know what it is and yeah, there's not really much I can do about that I'm afraid. Okay, into my middle, my middle colour. Wow, that is some funky stuff going on with my, ooh, ooh. I am using natural light, I do prefer to work in natural light. And the weather has changed today. Surprise, surprise. It was very, very cold and frosty this morning and it was very beautiful. And I went out for my run as I do and I was wrapped up in all my winter running gear. You know, I had like the proper thermal stuff on this morning. And then it started to rain about 11 o'clock, which is okay, but it was very, very icy cold, almost like sleet. And this afternoon, it is absolutely beautiful outside. Proper, you know, bright sunshine and considerably warmer than this morning. Um, so yeah, good old Scottish weather for you once again. Um, but yeah, when, when the sun goes in behind the clouds, I think that affects the, the light on the, um, uh, on the camera and it just kind of goes all funky trying to correct itself. It's nothing that I'm doing, I promise. I've been wanting to finish this picture for days. Um, I've just not had time 
or peace to do it. Um, there's just always been something going on these last few days to put a kibosh on it. But here we are now. And so I'm hoping today that we are going to get it finished. Get this nice and dark. Although the hatching isn't as heavy on this area, um, just in keeping with the rest of the uh, the petals and the the way we're going about it, I um, wanted to just keep the you know keep the consistency there. Mm, there we go. That's looking good. A bit happier already. I get my nose out of the picture as well. I'm sure you don't want to see the top down view of my very crooked Italian nose. All right, this, this little bit in here, I think I'm gonna, again, this, the hatching suggests that that is tucked in behind there. So I'm gonna make this one quite dark, you know, so it's kind of like tucked away in the background. Sometimes when you look at illustrations, it is quite difficult to determine the you know whether something is in front or behind it's not always the easiest thing to figure out especially when you're looking at slightly more um loose drawings like this um you know it's not it's not very regimented um it can be kind of difficult to tell sometimes now again here's another example i am trying to decide whether that is a petal on its own and this the start of this hatching here is the start of this petal or whether this is all one petal and it's just, you know, a sort of irregular shape. Again, I think I'll I'll err on the side of caution here. Um, and I'll make that just one petal on its own. It's not going to do any harm, right? <laughs> oh. So I'm wondering if any of you guys have been watching these videos, the just colouring videos, and if it's made you want to go and buy this book, or perhaps it's made you want to see some more of the images in the book because you think you might want to buy it. I'd be really interested to hear that. Um, and I did say before, I can't remember in which video, but if anybody would like to see a full flip through of this book I would be more than happy to do it and post it as a as a video for you guys if you'd like to see a little bit more of it if it's something that you're interested in you might be thinking about purchasing it um, I'd be happy to go through it that is not a problem I do really like this book so another controversial news just now I know that um, I am filming these videos quite far in advance and it will probably be old news by the time this is broadcast um, but the latest uh, scandal in the colouring world is Kirby Rosanna's latest release uh, Phantomorphia. Um, it's been so hyped and everyone's been super excited about it and people have finally started to get their copies and are bitterly, bitterly disappointed. I was kind of suspicious. Um, he did say after his third book, which is a Mythomorphia, he did say that that was going to be his last colouring book and he wasn't doing any more at all. That was it. And shortly after that came an announcement that he was bringing another book out. And everyone went, oh, okay, yay. Um, if you if you are a fan of his work, you really are a fan of his work. He is my favourite illustrator. So I was absolutely ecstatic that he was bringing out another book. However, uh, our counterparts in the US, hi guys, have received their copies. And as usual in the UK, we're about 10 million years behind everybody else. And we're not getting ours until May. But some of our lucky YouTubers uh, have received advanced copies. Um, one of those being Colour with Claire. Now Claire is excellent. She's got a really good channel. If you haven't seen it, check out her channel. She does lots of reviews. Um, and she's just a generally all round really nice person and I'll add the link to her site uh, down below and you can go and check her out but she had done uh, a review of the new book. Claire is very diplomatic and she doesn't like saying bad things about 
people's work and people's colouring books, she she would rather point out the good things about said book and just touch on the, you know, the sort of negatives. And it's the first time that I've ever watched one of her reviews where basically she's come out flat out and said this book's crap. Uh, I don't think she worded it quite like that. That's probably far less diplomatic than I'm giving her credit for. Uh, but it's so unlike her to do that. And it made me think, oh, I better watch this entire video. You know, I want to see what's going on in this book. All the images are, are you know, parts of the images are cut off up at the top of the paper. So you're not actually getting a full picture. The drawings are nothing, absolutely nothing like anything in his other books. It's almost as if it's been like an identity crisis or maybe some of his earlier work that was rejected for earlier books. One of the images in particular, if I hadn't known it was his work, I would have said it was Bennett Klein's work, but it's just not his work and it's not what colorists have been buying his books for. It's so far removed from the rest of his colouring books and it's just such a disappointment to the point where I've actually cancelled my pre-order. Now for me to do that, that's, you know, that's quite substantial. And it's it really is a shame because as I say, he's just so talented, but everyone is actually quite upset about it. They're not angry or like, oh, how dare you do this? They, they are genuinely gutted because they were looking forward to more of, of his very, very distinctive uh, work and his little doodles that he puts in and everything um, so it's a bit disappointing and there's lots of speculation as to how or why this has happened but apparently I haven't seen it myself but apparently he did release a, a, a statement on social media be, uh, blaming the the publishers saying that he had very little control over what was being put into the book and you know what they wanted and things and basically that his hands were tied I'm not sure how much of that I'm buying to be perfectly honest the very fact that he's brought out another two books when he said he wasn't doing any more suggests to me that he has either got greedy and someone's given him an offer that he has you know hasn't wanted to pass up or he has been misled, which I think is more likely because publishers, you know, it is known within the publishing industry that that happens quite a lot. Um, and he's been led to believe one thing. And then once he's signed paperwork and he's tied into a deal, you know, it's it's become a different beast entirely. Uh, and I think that's what's happened. But one of the most frightening things, not frightening, but one of the most disappointing things is the image on the front cover of the book is this fantastic fox that faces this way um, and it it does resemble his other book covers as well i'm just going to show you them i'm some right i'm having a kirby rant here but you know that's, that's what we're here for so the, these are kirby's other three books this is imagimorphia we have animorphia this was his first book and Mythomorphia, which was his most recent book before the newest release. Now, the reason I wanted to show you them is you can see the images on the front and they're very, very distinctive. You know, there is there is a definite style to that. And that is what we know and love Kirby for, just in case you're not familiar with these books. And on the front cover of Phantomorphia, which is his new one, there is this fox and it is in the same style as those covers that I've just shown you. So you're led to believe by looking at the cover that you're getting more of the same thing. There is no other image in that book other than that fox that bears any resemblance to that style of artwork. And the worst of it is to add insult to injury, the, the fox that is on the front cover is inside the colouring book, as is the same with these other books. The cover image is always somewhere inside. Uh, on the external cover, if you turn over to to the back of the book, the, the back end of the fox is there. So there's a pair of hind legs and a tail and it's got all his little doodles. The image on the inside of the book is just the front half of the fox. You do not get the back half of the fox. Now that to me is just outrageous there are no double spreads in the book and again it's something that, that Kirby's quite famous for because his double spreads are epic they really are so it just sounds as if it's been just a bit of a disaster from start to finish and as I say I, I'm, I'm genuinely gutted I really am because I absolutely love his artwork I'm not prepared to sit back and be ripped off and not only that though 
if you even though the book is clearly substandard it's you know the the it's poorly put together the image choices are completely you know they're a mile off if people continue to buy his books just because it's his book even if it's not up to the usual standard it sends the wrong message to the publisher the publisher needs to know that they've made an arse of things and my way of doing that is just saying well no i'm really sorry stand firm i'm not going to buy this it is not it doesn't sound like Kirby wanted to publish it. It doesn't sound like he's proud of it. And one thing you should never do is allow something to be published that you're not proud of because it's a bit like the internet. It never goes away. My first short story, my first published short story is on the internet for all to see. I'm not particularly fond of it. I was I was very happy at the time just because I'd had a piece of writing published. It's not my best piece of work. However, it seemed to fit well in with the, the, the content that that particular magazine were looking for. Even now, now this is like, oh, three, four years later, people are still finding it and saying, oh, Jeb, I didn't know that you wrote. And I'm like, oh, please don't read that story. <laughs> Um, and I have a funny feeling that this this Phantomorphia colouring book is going to continue to haunt poor Kirby for the rest of his days. And when, um, you know, someone speaks to me about it, they'll be like, oh yeah, remember that really crap colouring book that you brought out? <laughs> nah, I'm just joking now. It's, um, yeah, so it's a very controversial subject and that's been the sort of, the, the big chat the last day or so. But see, I, I'm genuinely gutted. I was really looking forward to having even more Kirby in my life. And see, when I open the book, I'm just like, this isn't Kirby, it's not him. Maybe they've got someone to ghost draw for him. You know, you know how you get like ghost writers. Maybe someone's ghost drawing for him. And he's just agreed to let them put his name to it. I don't know. Oh, oh, the controversy. Anyway, yeah, so that's, uh, that's kind of burst my bubble because it is the only book that I have on pre-order, you know, um, I'm not really have I don't really have any intentions of buying any more colouring books just now. oh I tell a lie actually I'm telling you lies I have Hannah Carlson's new book The Jewellery Box on pre-order coming out in August though so that's maybe why I've forgotten about it because it's quite far away um, anything that happens after July is it just it's not registering with me just now I, I can't get past the wedding once the wedding's done then I can return to to normal service um, so yeah, I've got that on pre-order, but I didn't have any anything else in the pipeline, so to speak. And I was really looking forward to it just because it's Kirby's book. Anyway, I, th I think we'll leave the, the, the Kirby rant alone for a little while. I would just like to point out as well that this is just my opinion. I am not suggesting that the entire, the entire colouring community agrees with me. Far from it. I'm merely just giving my opinion on the situation. And if anybody feels differently, then fine. I know that there's people that will buy the book anyway. Um, I'm also fine with that too. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. And some people that are maybe quite intimidated by his original books might actually quite like the new book because the images are much, much simpler. There's a lot less going on in the pictures. So that might encourage our colorists to perhaps have a go. Uh, see, I d unfortunately, I just don't, I just don't feel the same way, which is a shame. But anyway, anyway, I think that's enough ranting for one day. I'm quite excited about dinner tonight. Would you like me to tell you what I'm having for? I'm going to tell you what I'm having for dinner because you're not going to answer me anyway. I am making Moroccan meatballs tonight. I am excited about Moroccan meatballs. Having a, an Italian lineage, I am excited about anything that has pasta in it, and it does have pasta in it. Um, and I also really like meatballs, obviously. I also really, really like spicy food. So this is kind of like a, a, yeah, it's a pretty good matchup for me. So I'm quite excited to try this new recipe out and uh, see if they're really awesome or not. I really, I really hope that they are awesome. It's been ages since I've come across a new recipe that has really excited me. Um, I do do a lot of cooking. I like to cook from scratch. As a very young person, um, when I, I left school, I qualified as a chef and I worked in a four-star hotel. Realised very quickly that I didn't want it for a career. Um, I wasn't interested in doing split shifts and working 14-hour days. 
I think the exact phrase that I said was, I can't see myself doing this when I'm 40. And I don't think I've ever had such wisdom come out of my 16 year old self's mouth. And I am so glad that I made that decision. Because now, I, I still love cooking very, very much. I enjoy it, I like trying new things, and I have a sneaking suspicion, had I stuck with my original trade of catering, I might actually hate it by now. And I can't imagine a world with, without me cooking in it. That just wouldn't be right at all. So, yeah, I think I dodged a bullet with that one. So, yeah, looking forward to trying my new recipe. I get the verdict, because we, we, we have kind of like a system in this house. If I get a new recipe and I like the look of it, I will give it to my other half to look at and say, hey, what do you think to this? Will we give it a try? And if it gets a seal of approval from him, I will test it out once. And based on how we feel about it, if it's kind of meh, I will try and augment it and make it more interesting, more tasty, less spicy, more salty, whatever. And we will try a second time. Obviously, if it's a flat out, no, that's it. It never gets made again. And if after a second attempt, if it's still not really good, then we just scrap it and we don't cook it again. But if we manage to tweak it and get it to somewhere where it's something that we would look forward to eating for dinner, it goes in my recipe book. And we have done that for years. Um, it's just That's just one of those things that we do. So the, the upshot is, is I have a recipe book that's all, excuse me, it's all handwritten. And it's full of really tasty, awesome recipes. So yeah, that's that seems to work quite well. Thankfully though, um, my partner isn't a fussy eater. He he will not eat mushrooms. That's mushrooms are an absolute. Uh -uh. I can't eat nuts. I'm allergic to nuts. So apart from that, we're pretty good though. We'll we'll try stuff, even if it's something that you wouldn't necessarily go and say. Oh, I'm going to go and buy a papaya. <laughs> papaya hey that rhymes even if it's something you don't like it can taste different when you've you've you know combined it with other things in a dish so even if it has an ingredient that we're not particularly fond of we will still try the recipe because as I say it can it can take on a whole different you know flavor and texture when it's been cooked and it's in with other things so we're quite adventurous that way i have made some absolutely horrible things though <laughs> some real stinkers i remember making this batch of soup and i, I can't for that it was a while ago and i can't for the life of me remember what was actually in the soup but when i took the lid off the pot you know to to, to stir it and kind of rumble it about a bit the smell that came out the pot it honestly smelled like sweaty feet and i thought oh my word what have i done <laughs> What, what have, I, have i done something wrong what have I? and it was just awful and i thought to myself you know sometimes things don't taste the way they smell i mean take mcdonald's for example it smells amazing but uh, oh it's awful so i i thought i would persevere so i made this soup and i never said anything to my partner and i just put a bowl of it down in front of him and he went oh he says that smells a bit weird he says I, I, it's, did you were all the ingredients in date you know did you make sure that everything was okay in it and i said yeah yeah and I just stood and watched him with my arms folded as he tasted it. And the expression on his face was absolutely priceless. And I could see him trying to be diplomatic because I'd taken the time to stand and cook and try something out. And he was he was trying so hard. And I just looked at him and burst out laughing. I was like, it's awful, isn't it? And he's like, it's bloody stinking. <laughs> so that was the, the first and last time that we made the sweaty soup. Yeah. But I mean, there's no point, and I don't see the point in forcing people to eat things that are either absolutely horrid or, you know, things that they really, really don't like. I do have a thing about fussy eaters. That's like a total deal breaker for me. I did have an ex-boyfriend who was incredibly fussy, and it, it was actually the end of our relationship. Um, I just couldn't stand it. And the reason that I couldn't stand it was he would say that he didn't like something even though he'd never tried it, uh, I can't be doing with that. If you've tasted something and it, you're not fond of it or it, you know, it makes you wretch, then okay, fine. But don't say that you don't like something when you've never been near it in your puff or you don't even know what it looks like. But I have a real bugbear about that. I can't be doing with fussy eaters. So thankfully, um, yeah, my other half is not like that. 
this looks like a little curly bit here and I'm just trying to decide where the, the white should go. I think maybe in this side. Let's try that. Um, yeah, um, oh, it's not, it's curled that way, isn't it? Okay, let's go that way. I had to think about this. I can't be doing with thinking about things like this. I'm supposed to be relaxing here. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the mid shade in at this little part here. Just to give the, again, the illusion of that sort of slight curvature of it, you know, heading back down into the, into the dark part. That looks okay, I think. Yeah? What do you think? What do you think, guys? Do you know what else I'm thinking as well? I keep looking at this one here and I'm not happy. Now that I've started to go around here and I've left as much white as I have, I'm really not happy with these ones here. I wonder if I can rectify this with my, uh, my battery eraser. Let's try. I see this one's curled over, so maybe not that one. But this one, definitely. I hope this shows up on camera as much as it does. Yeah, that looks better, doesn't it? That's more in keeping with these ones on this side. All right, let's go for it. I might just need to pencil and yeah I'll just go back over this edge that's better and I've got this one to do as well these ones seem to be okay I'm just being cautious here to make sure I'm erasing at the right spot and I'm not going over too far into the petal behind it Yeah, what do we think to that? That's better. Yeah! Woo! We're winners. Okay, so because this is curling over this way, or that way, I can't make my, ha my hand bend that way, um, this part under here is gonna be quite dark. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm pressing quite heavily here again, just because it's on the hatched area. I'm just really pressing in there. Get that nice and, nice and dark. And we'll come right along here. And then start to lighten up. As we move out here. I have to try and even this up now. So I'll use my lightest colour first. Because normally if that, if that had been a straight petal coming out this way, obviously I would have the darkest, then I'd have the mid-tone, and then I would have the lighter tone. But because I've come quite far along here with the dark tone, I'm having to sort of blend it all back in um, so that it's, you know, not, I'm not going to have like a really big dark patch right next to this uh, light pink that I'm holding. But I'll start with the lightest colour anyway, and I can, I can blend in the others from, from there. how we go with this. Yeah. Yeah, that looks okay. My pencil's in my mouth again, sorry. I haven't been as bad for that just lately, putting pencils in my mouth, but then again, I haven't been doing a huge amount of colouring just of late, so. When I say of late, I mean in like the last week or so. <laughs> I have short time scales. Speaking of short time scales, I am so glad the clocks have changed. It is so nice to be able to get up and go out and run early in the morning. I think I've said before, I am an early riser anyway. I do like to get up and get stuff done really early on and under normal circumstances I would probably run in the winter you know in the dark um it's not really doable here because we are in the middle of nowhere and there are no street lights and I have tried going out with a head torch and things on and it's just not that clever because it's quite a lot of tracks and trails and all it takes is one wrong foot and you're face first down in the 
in the mud or the ice or whatever. Quite a long way home, so... Uh, I kind of stopped doing that and I was going out later, which I was managing fine with, you know, I was I was still okay to go out maybe nine o'clock in the morning, um, but I just don't enjoy it as much. So for the clocks to have changed now and I can go back to getting out at like six in the morning, uh, oh, it's just so lovely. I've really enjoyed my runs the last few mornings just because it has been nice and early. Because I, I like running about when, you know, everyone else is still kind of like, you know, they're not up and going yet. And I just like to have that sort of nice peace in the world, you know, to myself. I've got that little part of the morning all to myself and and I don't have to share it with anybody. It's just a, it's a really nice calming feeling, even when you're absolutely knackered and you're blowing out your butthole <laughs> because you're running too hard. It's, it's, it's still very nice. I enjoy it very much. I really like running. I don't know if you figured that out or not just by what I was saying, but I really like running. I do. I think it's, it's, it's very good for the mind as well as the body. It's very, very beneficial. Um, and don't listen to anybody that tells you that it ruins your knees. It does not ruin your knees. If you're doing it properly, it does not ruin your knees. It can actually strengthen your knee muscles. Anyway, that's another story for another day. I can't believe how many times I've said that. You know, just since, since I've started making YouTube videos, I seem to say that a lot. That's a, that's another story for another day. I need to start writing these down so that I do actually talk about them another day. In fact, I'm going to write that down right now. I'll post-it note. I don't like writing in coloured pencil, though. Another day. Okay, first point. Running is not bad for your knees. I'm going to stick this up somewhere and every time I'm making a video and I say that's a story for another day, I'm going to write it down and then see a couple of videos later. Yeah, you got it. I'm, I'm actually going to talk about what's on these. I digress once again. And people wonder why it's taken me three videos to, to get to not even the end of this flower. Oh, I can't help it. My, my little brain just roams about and I, 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 I'm I very uh, undisciplined with it. I just let it roam. You know, I'm like, you know, it's like a toddler. I'm like, yeah, just leave them, it's fine. I wouldn't actually be like that if I had a toddler, by the way. There seems to be lots of cars going up and down in front of the, the cave window today. It's, it's mildly unsettling. During the week, which it is just now, it's, um, what day is it? It's Thursday. Uh, during the week, we you know we do have a lot of traffic um, going up and down to the farm office and suppliers and things like that coming in with animal feed and all sorts. But it's quite late in the afternoon now, and it's it's kind of uncharacteristic for there to be this many vehicles going up and down. It's it's, it's kind of like discombobulating me a little bit. How dare they? <laughs> mm, still too much white here. Back in with my palest pink. Just build up a little bit more colour. Cover up some of my white patches as well. And just bring this pink a bit further up. This is one of those things that where it is advantageous for you if you're if you're sitting colouring something like this where there's quite a lot of lines. It's really helpful to sometimes, you know, maybe every sort of half hour or so, just get up and walk away from it and you know, go and make a cup of tea. I'm not talking about tea again. The last time I started talking about tea, I ended up stopping on the video to go and make myself tea. Yeah, but sometimes doing something like that and coming back and, you know, just with your eyes being a bit fresher on it, you can see some glaring omissions or things that maybe aren't just quite right or need a bit more work. Um, and something like this quite outlines a perfect example of what I did over here just, just then. Yeah, why did I not notice that the last, like, two? two and a bit hours that I've drawn, spent on this picture. So yeah, if you're feeling, uh, I think I've called it line, blind, line blindness before. Um, I believe that's a thing. I get number blindness with work. Part of my job is dealing with large volumes of cattle information, which is mostly numbers. And if I sit for too long doing the same thing, I end up getting numbers mixed up and putting them around the wrong way. Uh, you know, and write, writing things like 53 instead of 35. And it's just, I think it's just like fatigue that does it. I, ca I call that number blindness. Um, and I think you get the same thing with, 
with cut but I think you get the same thing with anything if you sit and stare at something for too long you know it's, it's never going to be good it's a bit like if you if you say the same word over and over you know if you say it enough times eventually it doesn't make sense try it I dare in fact try, try it right now the favourite word that I do it with is wood you say wood a couple hundred times and all of a sudden it loses all its meaning man I should write a, like a scientific paper on this how things lose their meaning so I mean there's my, my brain's away again like stop it Jem Jeez, oh. This is going to sound really silly, but this is my favourite petal. <laughs> oh, wow. Small but perfectly formed. Now, here's another one. Over here, I think this is a gap in between these two petals. I'm not entirely sure, but the shading is quite dark in that middle part, so I think that belongs in here mm. yeah I think we'll go with that let's do that now I don't want to take this dark colour too far into this leaf so I'm again I'm kind of going with the hatching but not all the way because I don't want it to be really dark all the way to the edge of the, the you know the tip of the petal but I'll I will use the mid pink over the top of this magenta um, and mix it a little bit. I would just like some of the, this darker colour down. Even right up here. Just again to really sort of push the fact that, that it's that petal is coming out from underneath this one. Right, let's do a bit of work with this middle colour now. Starting to come together. I actually don't have that many petals left. It's quite exciting. <laughs> oh. Easily pleased, excited by simple things. There's another car. Man, I can't be doing with all these cars. I live in the country for peace and tranquility, not cars. How dare they? Okay, I'm quite satisfied with that. I think I'm gonna have to do this one now and then that's that side done. Oh, this is quite a big one though. Now see, because I have this resting on something else, I have got a bit of a kink in the page. And you can see it there and I'm just gonna have to flatten that out so that I can do this petal. If you try and colour over the kink, um, you end up with a lot of pigment sticking to where the, the like the apex of the of the fold, so like across that bit there, um, and you end up with a really dark line, which is what we don't want. So I'll just have to do a bit of. I'll try and do this bit first. Oh, can you hear that? That is Jack Russell. Yeah, so dog barking was my partner coming in for a cup of coffee. So I just went to see how he was and if he's still in one piece, which uh, he assures me he is. So that's always good. I always prefer him when he's in one piece. He is very tired just now, just with the time of year. There's a lot of work to do. Um, and he turns into a sort of walking zombie for a couple of weeks <clears throat> so I do my best to try and look after him and just make sure that he's got everything that he needs and that's pretty basic he doesn't want for much as long as he's got food in his belly and he can have a warm bath and get into a clean bed generally that's enough to satisfy that needs <laughs> of the, the, the caveman. <laughs> oh dear. I don't think he would like me calling him the caveman. And saying that he probably wouldn't bother knowing him. I've called him worse. <laughs> I'm funny, aren't I? Real funny. 
All right, our flower's coming together quite nicely now. I'm quite pleased with this now. I'm just leaning a bit lighter with this mid-tone. I'm going to do a bit more blending with the magenta down here and the pale pink up here. I think I could make this part darker and get away with it. There we go. In that interim where I disappeared as well, I went and made my meatballs. <laughs> I um, prepared them and have put them in the fridge so that they are ready to go when it's time to eat. There's a handy hint for anybody that's not great at cooking when you're making meatballs always chill them right down before you put them in the pan and it helps the um it helps them to coagulate and it stops them falling to pieces in your pan and that works for all meatballs there you go that's your handy hint for today again i'm going to do the same thing here and go with this paler pink and just work it down towards my mid-tone colour just build a bit more of that up I've kind of got used to the paper now um, I don't feel as, I, to begin with, I felt as if I was working really hard just to get the, you know, the colour to go down. Um, but I've kind of sort of settled into it now and it's not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. this lighter pink just at this corner here down this edge oh I think I might need to empty my sharpener I've just taken that back out and it's covered in sort of multi multi-coloured little baby shavings So there we go, that's just, I've just stuck to the hatched area and there's also this part here, which I don't really know what's going on with that, but I'm going to make that dark too. Man, I need to sharpen everything. Definitely need to empty that sharpener. Now along this edge, although I'm using the mid-tone, I'm going to darken that down as much as I can with the mid-tone. Again, just to sort of go with the, the in-keeping of it being tucked in behind. Tucked in behind the other petal. I am unaware if I have said leaf at any point in this video instead of petal. I seem to be quite bad for it. So if I have up till now, I am terribly sorry uh, and I will pay more attention <laughs> for this last part. <laughs> All right, let's go for it. This is a big petal. I've just noticed there's two little folded over bits in this one up here. That's folded behind itself, so I'll make that dark. This one's folded up and over. You can hardly see that. That's teeny tiny. Sharpen. Tone. 
when working on bigger sections like this I do find it easier to be uh, a little more methodical and less um, erratic the way I usually am when I'm picking sections to colour. Uh, I do tend to... Uh, I'm, th I'm just thinking about that before I say it because I think I might be telling you lies. Um, if I'm working on a section and in this instance, uh, the, the petal, you know, a particular petal. I think I do tend to work quite methodically within the section. I just don't like working methodically around an entire picture. A bit tedious, I think. It's funny because with quite a lot of tasks, I take pleasure in doing things in a sequence and I find it very calming and reassuring that there is a logical pattern to things. But weirdly, when it comes to art, I, I want to do the complete opposite and I don't know if that is just because I can and you know maybe I feel it's like a bit of a release from you know having to do things a proper way I'm not entirely sure but I it's strange how in in my sort of everyday life I am quite a regimented and organized person I like my routines I like things in a certain place and I like things done a certain way but yet when it comes to coloring and drawing I don't necessarily take the the most logical route um or do things in the most logical order uh so I don't know maybe that's like an inner rebel coming out of me I don't know I don't find it discomforting though in art, whereas in everyday life, if you if you mess up my pattern or my routine, it sends me absolutely stellar and I just don't know what to do with myself. And I can't I can't rest and I can't get on with my day until everything's right again. It's uh, one of my major failings as a person. I think that could be a little bit, uh, I, I was gonna say, I was gonna make that a little bit darker, but the, the bulk of the light just the way I've coloured this and the way the hatchings come through the, the, the colour, it looks as if the light is hitting mostly here, so I don't think I am going to make that one any darker. I think that's the edge of that petal there. I need to move this way slightly now. I've just looked, you know, sitting looking at this now, at this point I've just realised there's not actually a huge amount left to do here once I've finished these petals. We've got a couple of these um, leaves to do. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more to the background, which I'll get to soon, but there's really not a huge amount left to do. Which is probably just as well, because I seem to have been at this picture for ever. Not that I'm complaining, I, you know, I quite enjoy it. As I said, I am quite a slow colourist and it's because I take pleasure in the process. I'm not in any rush, but I just I just seem to have been colouring this one picture for ages. I think it partially as well because I haven't done a lot of colouring and my opportunities to sit and colour have been quite few and far between this last week or so. So maybe that's why it feels as if it's taken a really long time to, you know, to colour such a simple picture. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Back to my mid-tone now. Yeah, I'm not happy with this. I want it a lot darker than that. It looks as if, it really looks as if it's sort of quite out of place there. Just working some more of this magenta. Again, start inside the hatching, start in the, the darkest part and then start to pull it up out towards the edge of the... I nearly said leaf there, petal. Out towards the edge of the petal. Come on, Gem, hold it together. Is my camera doing funky lighting things again or am I just imagining that? I think I'm imagining it. I have the monitor just over on this side so it's in like the corner of my eye and I'm sure I can see it darkening and lightening as I go but I think I'm actually imagining things. 
Oh no, I can't even put it down to lack of sleep. We're not far enough into lambing for it to be due to lack of sleep. That's one of the things when you when you start a YouTube channel, um, you very much tend to work with what you have. Uh, the temptation to go and buy a whole load of new kit is immense because you, obviously you want to make your videos as high quality as you possibly can, and you want them to you know to be improving, and you want to have you know really good videos. But um, it's really easy to get carried away. And I've been very much of the mindset that let's just wait and see whether people actually want to watch your videos before you start spending money on things like that. As it stands though, my camera is pretty new. Um, so I'm quite lucky that way. My laptop, however, not. And it's one of those things that I was going to be replacing at some point this year, probably at Christmas after the, again, after the wedding, everything's after the wedding. Um, and just with starting up this channel, that it, it's kind of concreted my decision um I was further and I thought well you know it's, it's still working okay but it is just very slow now I mean it's not powerful enough to run a lot of the the programs and things that are around these days so yeah I think I think I'm going to go for it but it's probably going to be a lot nearer to Christmas that I you know start talking about that kind of money again so we've just other other things to be dealing with we will have a new uh, sheepdog puppy before then as well and if anybody has any dogs, you will know that they are bloody expensive. So we'll have to wait. Uh, my old relic of a laptop will just have to keep chugging on for another little while yet. I'm actually quite impressed with this laptop. The laptop I had before this was back in the dark old days when laptops were really, really expensive. You couldn't buy a cheap laptop. You know, you didn't get student, you know, level pricing for laptops. It was if you wanted a laptop, you had to pay a lot of money for them. My old laptop was a Sony Vio, which, you know, you were into pretty big money for them. I think you still are, but I haven't looked. The the Rolls Royce of laptops when I got it, and I paid a lot of money for that. I paid into a four-figure sum for that. And at the time, I wasn't using it for work or anything. It was purely just for, for personal use. Um, and you know, that laptop lasted me nearly nine years. Uh, I, I did have the RAM upgraded and stuff in it as I went along, uh, but I didn't do a huge amount to it, and that laptop aged really, really well. So it was it was well worth the money. The laptop I have now is, it will be seven years old this year. I bought it in my final year at university for doing my dissertation because I just felt that the, the old Sony was, you know, past its best. And I thought a nice new laptop for doing my dissertation is probably a good idea. And I paid a fraction of the price for the one that I have now compared to the, the Sony Vio. And it's done really, really well as well. So I'm, I'm quite impressed. Although it's, we, are, we are at that frustrating stage now and uh, I am facing so many technological barriers just because my laptop is an antique in technology terms. However, I, I definitely got my money's worth out of this one and it's still working. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. It just doesn't run anything. So I think I've done okay on that front, but yeah, we're going to be going for a new one. If anybody has any suggestions on good laptops, I am open to all suggestions. You can leave me a comment in the little section below. That would be pretty cool. I'm not happy with this last petal at all. Hmm. I think I'll leave it just now and we'll go and do our leaves. <laughs> leave it and go and do the leaves. <laughs> Hilarious. And I'll come back and take a look at it in a little while and see what I think about it. Right, my camera is definitely doing funky things. What are you doing? That's better. I know exactly what's going to happen when I go to edit this video and I'm play, you know, I'm watching it on playback. I bet you there's absolutely nothing wrong with the lighting. I can almost guarantee it. And then when I post this video, you all, all are going to think that I'm a crazy person. I can see that happening. Just for the record, I'm not a crazy person. 
All right, so this color here that I'm using is the Earth Green, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. I really want to show you the, the, the writing on the pencils, but it's so difficult when they're metallic like this. If I tilt it like that, Earth Green, can you see that? Hopefully you can. I know some people, especially colorists, maybe not so much artists, but colorists seem to like to have something on in the background when they're coloring. And some people it's movies uh, or you know films, and some people it is YouTube. I am one of those people I like to watch YouTube when I'm coloring. And again, I'm, I'm kind of half watching, I'm more listening to it than watching it. But for that purpose, it's kind of why I like to show the pencils because some people will just have it on and have the sound turned off. And it means if they are, you know, they're curious as to, as to what colors I'm using, they will flash up on the screen every now and then and they can always go back and look. Um, so there you go. If you're, if you're the person that's gonna have this on in the background when you're coloring, uh, if you see a color that I'm using, don't worry, just flick back through the video and at some point you will see me holding the pencil up. <laughs> I really like this shade of green. Green is my favorite color. Just gonna work in some of the darker green in these really black patches all up in here. Then maybe a bit more green, earth green even. Put that in there. Beautiful. One leaf left. Mm, this is my favourite leaf. Remember, this was my favourite petal. This is my favourite leaf. So, after I have finished this, I will be looking for my next picture to do for the Just Colouring series of videos. If you have a particular picture that you would like me to colour, then please feel free to let me know. I am perfectly happy to take suggestions and if I have the colouring book that you are looking for, I'll be sure to take it into account when deciding my next video. After I have done this though, I will say I have, I have been incredibly busy and I have made a considerable number of videos for my YouTube channel and even in the last sort of three weeks and I actually haven't done any colouring or drawing just for myself in that time and I am definitely at the point where I need to do some of that but as I said back at the beginning of the video I'm kind of like at my wits end with technology just now and I think that this weekend I may spend a fair bit of time just drawing and colouring for myself um, without any cameras or anything like that. It's important that I still get the enjoyment out of art for myself. Much as I love sharing things with you guys, and I really, really do, um, if anybody gets a tiny little bit of joy out of any of my videos, then that makes me feel really good as a person. Um, I, I like the fact that I can make the world a teeny tiny bit of a happier place, even if it's just for 15 minutes watching a video, that's good enough for me. Um, but I do also think it's important to have time to oneself that is just for oneself. And it's one of the reasons why I like to run first thing in the morning. <clears throat> and I am a firm advocate of making sure that you ha take time for yourself. Always have your me time. Um, so I think I'm gonna do some of that this weekend. I do have housework and chores to do, as always, because we have been quite busy outside in the yard, but also I've been busy with my own work as well. So it's quite important that I take that time out for myself too. But what that means is I'll be nice and fresh and I will come and make more videos for you. <laughs> Does that sound like a good deal? Hope so. All right, this is looking pretty good. It's actually looking a lot brighter than I thought it would. I thought it would be quite dull and dark just with all the uh, the hatching, but it's actually turned out really nicely. The last thing that I'm going to do is bring in another pencil. Da -da, and this is dark chrome yellow. <clears throat> I really can't clear my throat today. I'm so sorry. Oh, that's better. Okay, so dark chrome yellow. And all I want to do is darken down 
round the <laughs> oh I'm choking hmm Right guys, sorry about that. I actually thought I was gonna like lose a lung there. Yeah, all I want to do is take this um this uh dark chrome yellow and just darken up round the edge of the flower itself just to give the background a little bit more depth. Now this should go down really nicely on top of the couple of layers that I've got um of the lighter yellow. So I, I'm I'm not anticipating having to do a huge amount of blending here and I, I I want it to be very subtle I don't want it to be um you know a great big thick band all the way around I just I just wanted to give it a little bit more depth and a little bit more contrast so I'm just using little circular motions and I'll say I'm probably medium pressure here and I'm just going to work my way around all the petals and then just let it sort of fade out into the, you know, into the, the paler yellow. I don't even know if I'll go around the leaves. I might just go around the flower. I have no idea why I decided to do this or when I decided that this would be a good idea. Um, I was trying to think back to, to see when the moment struck me, but I actually can't remember. I just thought, that at one point, just thought, oh, that would look quite nice if it had a bit of a darker edge to it around the flower. And then I thought about it for a day or two. I do most of my thinking when I'm out walking with my dogs after I finish my day's work. That's when most of my pondering and my, my brain wandering happens is when I'm out with the dogs. Um making a, an effort now as well to not take my mobile phone with me every time I go out with the dogs. I do like having my phone with me because I like to take photographs when I'm out and I don't really like lugging my camera about with me around the farm because if I drop it, um, that's not going to end well. I would much rather drop my phone than my camera. So I do, I do tend to carry my mobile phone but what I've found is that when I've got my phone with me, and I start walking, I end up with my nose in my phone for like half the walk and I'm not paying attention to my surroundings and I'm not appreciating the like the views or the scenery or even just where I am. And it, I don't feel right about that because I am very, very grateful for for where I live. I mean, it's, it is, it's a lovely spot. It's very, very beautiful here. Well, it's beautiful when the weather's nice. Um, and I just think that by having my phone and, you know, I'm either messing about on Pinterest or or whatever, I'm, I'm not taking the time to really enjoy it. And also as well, I spend enough of my day with my face buried in some sort of screen, so I really don't need to be doing it when I'm out walking my dogs as well. So, as I say, I've made a conscious effort, not every time I go out, because uh, I say I do like to take pictures, but perhaps when the days when the, the, the weather's a bit duller, you know, if there isn't a lovely pretty sky or whatever, I'll just leave my phone behind and just go and enjoy walking with my dogs and talking to them and playing with them and all the rest of it while we're out. That's kind of kind of what I'm doing with that. But I do really like it here. We had a, a short spell in our lives before we moved here. Um, we did live in England for a little while and we decided to move back to Scotland. And when we first moved back up, um, before we decided whether or not we were, you know, not whether or not where we were going to take on a new farm, we stayed in a, in a town um, in a sort of temporary accommodation and it it was such a culture shock because when we were in England we were you know we were out in the country as well and going from that to living in a populated area and it was in a suburb and not in a particularly good area as well I have to say it was I found it really hard work I found it difficult and it it, it was silly things it wasn't anything th you no know, threatening or life changing or it was all the the tiny little things like the first two weeks i couldn't sleep properly because there was a street light right outside my bedroom window and the bedroom was on the second floor and i was i'm just so used to being in the absolute pitch dark at night 
and it felt like the middle of the day and it took me weeks to get used to that. Also as well, ha losing your privacy. And when I say that, I don't mean, well, I suppose I do mean it like that, but again, I'm just, I'm not used to having other people's houses looking onto my house. I'm not used to other people's windows being able to see my windows and vice versa. And a lot of the time, you know, if I, if I looked out the, the bedroom window to the back of the house, which looked onto other gardens, if someone was in their garden, I, I, I had to come away from the window. I just, I couldn't look somewhere else because I just wanted to look at them. And that it just felt horrible. I was like, oh, that's t it's like total invasion of privacy. So it's, it's silly things like that. Now, said person in garden probably didn't even notice that I was standing at my window, but I just felt so self-conscious and paranoid that they would think that I was looking at them. Um, and it's all like stupid stuff like that. And all those little things, and there was a lot of them, that was just, you know, an, an example, a small example of some of them. But all those little things added up. And I was like, I never, ever, ever want to live in a populated area ever again. I, re I really, really don't. I've become so used to to what I've got here and I really like it and I don't want that to ever change. <laughs> there are downsides to staying in a rural area, don't get me wrong, and they are plentiful, let me tell you. Going for an alcoholic beverage in a, a public house, for example, is a military operation because a lot of the taxi companies will not go too far out of the town, especially on a busy night like a Saturday night, you have to pre-book taxis. And if you do that, then that is that is when your night is going to end, whether you want it to or not. Also as well, obviously the price of the taxi, because you're so much further out, is more expensive um, and so on and so forth. Uh, so yeah, socialising in the town isn't the easiest thing to organise. Um, so needless to say, we don't do that very often. Terrible internet connection, there's another one. Uh, I refer to our internet as hillbilly internet because even with a fibre line which was uh, brought in as a business line, if we tap into that line, our speed is no faster than a standard ADSL broadband connection. And needless to say, it's not very fast. On a good day, we might get four meg. Yep, you heard me. I had a whole four meg. On a bad day, one, if you're lucky. On average, about two. So it, it, two is enough to do the things that I need to do. Uploading videos to YouTube is excruciating, especially if they're long videos like this one. Basically, I wait until a quiet time. So usually last thing at night and I let the video upload to YouTube overnight. And when I get up in the morning, most of the time it's done. <laughs> so yeah, the, the, the internet situation's not great. And the minute you have any bad weather, because you're so far from the exchange, you, you're the first point where the internet is gonna drop off. That is guaranteed to happen. We had a whole week over Christmas and New Year with no internet at all, nothing. And people think, oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, you, you go a week without any internet in your house, especially if you, if you are a, gen, a generally technological-minded person. Um, you go to do certain things and you're like, oh, I can't do that. So yeah, internet situation in the country, absolutely rubbish. Terrible, awful, just not cool at all. What else is crap about staying in the country? Oh, the mailman. There's another one. Oh, my word. Talk about inconsistent... Sometimes your mail seems to run completely normally, like every other person in the UK or whichever country you live in. And you think, yeah, everything's hunky-dory. And then every now and then, eh, you just don't see any mail for a couple of days. You're like, oh, okay. Okay, thanks. And then you get a bundle of letters all together like three days later. So that, yeah, that happens quite a lot. When, it, when we had um, our bad storm, when Storm Emma was here, we didn't see the mailman for a week. Uh, that's because he couldn't get up the road though. <laughs> so we let him off with that one, that's okay. That is a good thing about um, about the mail system though in a rural area. You tend to get the same postman all the time. They tend to do you favours because you are a bit further out and they're not supposed to, so I'm not naming names because I don't want anyone getting in trouble. But things like packages that are supposed to be signed for, if they are not signed for, they go back to the sorting office and then you have to go to the sorting office to sign for it to pick it up. 
going to the sorting office is a bit of a trek and it's something that you don't really want to have to do so quite often our postie if we're not and he knows we're, we're floating about in the yard somewhere he just puts a little signature on it himself and then pops it <laughs> pops it in the box so that's quite nice of him and we appreciate things like that we did give him a Christmas card with a little something in it, which again, I don't think they're supposed to take anything, but yeah, we gave him a Christmas card just to see how much we appreciated it. I was trying to name all the crap things about staying in the country and I've ended up talking about good things again. I'm trying to think what else. Oh yeah, uh, no means gas. You get used to using an electric stove. I, I, I always prefer a gas stove, but you do get used to using an electric stove. That's not really a problem. Downside to that is if you have a power cut, which again are plentiful, we do not have the best power uh, supply. We have dips in our power quite a lot. If you have a power cut, you lose absolutely everything. Um, at least you know if you have a if you have a gas stove, you can always boil a, a kettle on the stove, um, and at least you've got some hot water. We don't have that option. If the power goes off, that's it. It's over. Um, so that's another pretty crap thing uh, is not having means gas, and also the fact that our power supply is tenuous on occasions. I've gone three days without power here and there was it was because there was maintenance work, it wasn't because of the weather or anything. Um, so we did have a chance to prepare, but after like halfway through the second day, it got a bit wearing. Um, and there's only only so many um, games of Monopoly you can play by candlelight in the evenings <laughs> before you start to get a bit fed up. We were warm enough, right enough, that we have a, an open fire in one of our rooms, so the fire was on every night, which was quite nice. Okay, we're getting there now. I'm just gonna turn this a little bit and do my, my crinkly bit. Yeah, so um, there. Although I was, uh, although I wasn't entirely enamoured with staying in the, in a populated area. Um, I think it's just what you're used to and what your preference. There's, there's no doubt about that, but it depends whether or not they're deal breakers for you. The other thing that I find quite amusing that visitors always comment on, and it's something that doesn't bother me at all, is just because of where we are, we have no fast food chains nearby. There are no McDonald's, there are no KFCs. I think our nearest, I would imagine, I haven't actually checked this out for sure, but I would imagine that our nearest fast food place would be... Um, in the nearest city, which is a good 25 minute drive away. Now, if you're in the US, that doesn't sound very far, but in the UK, that is a long freaking way to go for a McDonald's. Yeah, so we don't have the temptation of, oh, can't be bothered cooking, let's just go and get a, you know, something horrible and deep fried. So a lot of people use um, takeaway apps, like Just Eat or Hungry Horse, that kind of thing. Hungry Horse? No, that's a restaurant chain. Hungry House. Hungry House. A lot of people use them on maybe like a Friday or a Saturday night and it means they literally have a takeaway and they don't have to leave their sofa. They can just keep their fat asses watching TV or whatever it is they do. Nobody will deliver to us. Therefore, we do not have the luxury of ordering takeaway from an app. Again, that's um, debatable whether that is a blessing in disguise or not. Yeah, I don't know whether that's a blessing in disguise or not, but I have a very odd occasion where that bugs me because sometimes you just want to sit in your pyjamas and eat pizza. No, we've got to go and get ours. <laughs> okay. I am really pleased with the way that this has turned out and it's been an absolute pleasure colouring in this book. It really, really has. Yeah, I'd say that's turned out well. I'm glad I put this darker yellow into. I think it just finishes it off nicely. I would love to know what you think of this piece. I just want to say thank you very much for joining me. And I'd also like to say a, a nice hello and a big thank you to my 30 subscribers. Three zero. Uh, that is overwhelmingly lovely. Um, obviously, some of you are enjoying my videos. If there are things you want to see, please let me know. As I said before, I'm really open to feedback and I'm open to constructive criticism as well. If there's things that you don't like about my videos, don't be scared to say um, I'm pretty thick-skinned. Just don't be nasty about it because we don't do nasty in the Colour Cave. Yeah, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would be really, really nice. Um, you can subscribe if you haven't already. 
and um, next time we shall be doing a completely new picture when we do our just colouring. So thanks for staying to the end guys and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.